Aubrey, I haven't seen you in a while since last week. <laughs> I know. Oh, I've been busy going to all kinds of museums and lakes and no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a random like it's response in a conversation. Yeah, um, but guys, it's not random because you are asked about these weird things on IELTS and it would be weird in daily conversation if someone walked up to you and was like, can you please talk about a river for two minutes? Um, but unfortunately on IELTS, you have to talk about weird things for two minutes. So when is this a problem? Man, when it's just something you don't um, talk about with people, to talk about it for two minutes feels really foreign. So that's the tricky thing, right? If you're asked to describe a lake or a river or a museum or something that you just don't talk about that often with friends, or maybe you haven't been there in a while, so you just haven't yeah. really thought about it, this can be tricky. Exactly, guys. So we know um, a lot of you have questions about this. We saw a question about this on YouTube. So we're going to explain and give an example of how you can answer a part two question. That's a topic you don't have a lot to say on and and go off topic, fill that two minutes and still get the highest score possible. So we're going to talk about how to answer difficult top two, top two, <laughs> part two <laughs> topics um, successfully, even when you don't have a lot to say. Yes. Awesome. This is going to be really good. I'm excited for your example. We gave Jessica a minute to take notes and think like you guys are going to have before your part two. So hopefully you'll have lots of great stuff to share with us, Jessica. But yeah, I want to make sure you guys are thinking about you. Like you said, Jessica, you can be asked all kinds of random stuff. And the question really is, how much can you go off topic? Like how much do you have to directly answer that question? And at what point can you start sharing sort of anything related or talk about something totally separate? And that I think is a question a lot of you have because there is no really specific direction about this. So remember guys, focus on the score, right? In order to score a seven or higher, you have to show that you can keep talking without hesitating too much, without stopping, without silence. Um, you're not graded on sticking to one topic for two minutes, okay? So as long as you can signal fluently to the examiner that you've said all you can say about one thing and you're going to talk about something else, this is fluency, this is communication. You will still get a high score. So before we get to an example on that, let's talk about some signal phrases that we can use to go from the topic we have to talk about, but we don't have a lot to say into a different topic so we can fill that two minutes. So how do we transition, Aubrey? Yeah. So I think what I do most often in just my native natural speech is I'll say like, actually, believe it or not. And then I'm going to start sharing something that's a little off topic, right? I'm changing the direction a little bit. That's a really native natural one. I love um, that it hinges on that word actually. Um, I feel like a lot of non-natives have difficulty using this naturally, this word actually. Um, and we really use this when, when a thought occurs to us spontaneously, right? And that is often when we're going to change direction because it's like, oh, I just thought of something I want to say and I'm going to say it even if it's not totally connected. <laughs> to what you asked. We always say, oh, actually, it's like, oh, I just remembered this thing that I want to tell you. So this is a great signal word that you're going to shift a little bit. So if you've been talking about a museum, you want to start talking about a river, you could be like, actually, what I have more to talk about is the river. Or actually, believe it or not, um, I don't have anything else to say about the museum. So <laughs> I would rather... <laughs> Describe yes. the beautiful river. <laughs> yes. Or like our student who commented on this um, YouTube 
video was asking, can I talk about a hospital that's near the lake, that's in the vicinity or the lake or the museum? So if you have answered the question, if you're asked about a lake, for example, you've described it, you've talked about it a little bit, this is the perfect way to transition. You could say, actually, believe it or not, I was born at a hospital totally. right by that lake. Love it. We had to cross a bridge to it, right? Yes, absolutely. You can talk about a hospital near the lake, but you need something to signal that you're transitioning to something that's really not related. Yeah. Um, before we teach you two more phrases, guys, and get to that example, I want to shout out the uh, comment that inspired today's episode. So Shafat Goraya uh, commented on our YouTube video, which you guys should definitely go watch after this. It's called Acceptably Go Off Topic in IELTS Speaking Part 2. Okay, so definitely watch that video as a follow-up, guys. So what this person said was, for a museum or lake topic, can I talk about the hospital, which is in the vicinity of the lake or museum? So yeah, definitely. As long as you address what is on that topic card directly, you can definitely veer off into describing whatever is close by. You're still talking about the area of the place. So another transition phrase is, in fact, this may surprise you, but... That is a lovely phrase too. So um, in fact, this may surprise you, but this museum is actually very, very tiny. And there isn't a whole lot else to say about that, but there is something close by, which is fantastic that I would like to tell you about. Yes, I noticed you guys, um, Jessica's intonation. When you're sharing these transition phrases, it will sound very strange if you say them in a monotone, right? Mm -hmm. Our intonation mm -hmm. is really rising and falling. You need that actually, believe it or not, right? We're really right, emphasizing yeah. those words to signal that change. And if you just say this in a monotone, your intonation isn't also signaling that change. And don't rush through these phrases. Yes. You want to you want to to suck out all of the high score that you can from every phrase. Exploit these phrases. So don't be like actually believe it or not. Like we don't want to rush through this amazing opportunity. Slow down. Increase that exaggerated pronunciation. Draw in that listener. Draw in the examiner so that the examiner notices you are speaking in a very impressive way. You are giving space to these words. So again, like Aubrey just said, we wouldn't rush through in a monotone. We would say, in fact, this may surprise you, right? I'm actually slowing down a lot when I use these phrases. Yes, absolutely. And a third and final option is my favorite because it also has, has idiomatic language here, guys. It is, okay, this may sound like <laughs> it's out of left field, so but, good. which is a that great is so idiom good. that means out of nowhere, right? This may seem like I'm just pulling it out of, it just doesn't, it's not quite related. Does this come from baseball? Probably. Yep. <laughs> we have so many idioms that come from baseball. Hit it out of the ballpark, you know, like that's mm -hmm. a home run. So <laughs> many idioms come from baseball. I don't even like baseball that much, but um, <laughs> unfortunately, that's where a lot of the idioms come from. So yeah, okay, let's let's use this in in an example. So I'm asked to describe. Um, I'm asked to describe a lake, but I don't have a lot to say. So I want to talk about a hospital nearby, like our student there. Um, I could describe the lake as much as I can and then be like, okay, this may sound like it's out of left field, but it's not because the hospital is actually right next to the lake. Um, but the reason I want to tell you about this hospital is because that's where I was born. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right that you have to make it make sense for the examiner you still need the organization so you can see how we're sharing why if we're going to talk about a hospital both of our examples have been the fact that we were born there there kind of needs to be a reason that you're talking about a hospital yeah. right even if you share this transition phrase you've got to bring the examiner into your mindset why are you talking about a hospital sure <laughs> you can but make it make sense 
All right, so let's see if I can successfully demonstrate this strategy to our students, Aubrey. Um, are you going to be the examiner here so yes. I can be the candidate? Okay. I'm pulling right. up my Oof. clock. I'm going to give you two minutes, and then I'll give you some feedback. And so listeners, oh. listen closely. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for your answer. Your time begins now. Or rather, can you start speaking <laughs> now, please? <laughs> Thank you, examiner. Um, so there is a museum that is pretty famous, at least locally in Portland. It's called OMSI, the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. Um, we go there probably a few times a year. It's super cool. The last time we went there, we went to see a Marvel exhibit. Um, and to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed. It honestly wasn't that interesting or captivating. Um, but actually, believe it or not, the number one memory that comes to mind when I think of this museum actually has nothing to do with the museum. It is the day that I spent on the river right next to the museum with some very close family friends. The reason this memory is top of mind is this morning, Facebook reminded me, <laughs> they said, here is your memory from six years ago. And it was pictures. It consisted of four pictures that me, my friend Jordan, her son Harlan, my son James, pictures of all of us on this beautifully gray, typical Portland day. We went to the museum. Um, we parked in the parking lot, but we didn't actually go in. We chose to visit a recently built bridge that is right outside the museum. You could see it from the windows. It's called the Tillicum Crossing Bridge, and it is a pedestrian only um, thoroughfare and it is gorgeous. The design of it is absolutely stunning. It's like this long hanging from the cloudy sky type structure. And it goes over the Willamette river, one of our major rivers in Portland. And so anyway, back to my story, we met at the parking lot and we walked straight to this new bridge because we were drawn in. It was brand new. It was gorgeous. And we spent all day. Thank um, you. Oh. Ooh, good job. <laughs> did that feel like it went pretty fast? I feel like I you could have talked to, for a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I get to talk about our bridge adventure. I thought that was going to be more difficult than it was. I'm yeah, well, because you're using <laughs> all of these strategies we talk about, right? You're using these transition phrases to go off topic in a really native, natural way that would make sense for the examiner. And you're telling a story. If you, you start telling this story of something that happened and then you're talking about the bridge, you didn't even get really to the visit <laughs> to the museum. You could have talked for 20 minutes. It's so crazy how... <laughs> Suddenly, if you're telling a story, those two minutes just fly by. Yeah, I really want students to um, try and track where I was going with that answer mm. because I took a lot of side trips. I veered off that main branch quite a bit and I would still get a nine, guys. This is because it is fluent. It is connected. I am always signaling to the listener, to the examiner, where I'm going, right? I'm going off topic now. I'm talking about this because I, right, just use as many transition phrases as you can. And you can really take that answer anywhere you want to. Yes, exactly. Go back and listen again and, and think about all of those transitions when she, what she says to move into talking about something else and talking about what reminded her of this, right? That Facebook post and then saying, anyway, back to my story, all of these transitions that made it so we could follow very easily what she's talking about. And it made perfect sense. And one thing you did that I really wanted to highlight is I think students often will say a word that's like a band six word when they know a higher level word. Mm. And you said this where you said it wasn't interesting or captivating. Hmm. And I could totally see a student saying it wasn't interesting and then immediately thinking, I wish I had said captivating. I know that word and it's higher level. Add it, right? It wasn't yeah. interesting or captivating. Absolutely, right? If it comes to you after, that's such a great way to get that higher level vocabulary in, even if it takes you a second longer to think of it, right? Such a good strategy. Because that was my exact thought process. I said the adjective interesting, and my mind was like, that word's not interesting. I need to think of another adjective. 
<laughs> exactly. Just like students will, right? As you're yep. trying to get this higher level vocabulary, sometimes as you're telling a story, it won't be top of mind, which is a good idiom used in your answer. It won't come to you immediately, but you'll say that lower level word and then immediately will come to you. Share it as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's not vocabulary repetition. That's showing that you also know these higher level words. Yeah, exactly. Um, and don't feel like you made a mistake, right? It's not a right. mistake. You're just describing more, right? Um, and remember that even even natives do that, like I just did in my answer. But absolutely, it will be more difficult to do that if you are speaking too fast. So going back, just to remind you guys of the strategy I mentioned earlier, slow down a little bit. Give yourself space to exaggerate, to enunciate, to show amazing intonation, but also space to think a little bit more about the words you're choosing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, such great advice. I'm so glad this student left this comment on YouTube, which inspired this amazing episode for you guys. Leave us comments on YouTube videos or email us support at allearsenglish.com so we can answer your IELTS questions here on the podcast. Yep. Exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to hit follow if you are not following already. And check us out on YouTube if you're only on the podcast, IELTS Energy TV. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Aubrey. See you next time. Bye. Bye.